I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, David? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I can't complain. We are kind of here together because I do see you while we record this, so you guys <laughs> yeah, understand. Right? You know, I do see you. are eating right now, so you're eating on the show, and it's <laughs> really interesting. Uh, try not to chew too loud, because you have the mic in front of you, you know, right? I muted it. You muted it. Oh, okay, so you can eat, because it's snack time, right? You got to get yes, your meals in. Got to get going. <laughs> yes, you do. I understand completely. So, this week our focus is the programming of life. Today's meeting of the minds, I would like to discuss the process of unconditioning. So we have discussed the purpose and processing of the tribalization process itself, the programming. The purpose is to program our self-worth, our self-esteem, and our self-image to create an identity for us to live and function within our tribe. The process is for the immediate tribe to break the will of the child by teaching the child through their behaviors and actions. The child's state is a frequency of theta, so the child records the parents and the immediate tribe's actions and emotions. This process creates proper programming in the career finance, health, relationship, and personal and spiritual growth categories, giving the child what it needs to, one, fit within the tribe, two, give proper function for the tribe to survive, and three, to pass the programming to the next generation of the tribe's members. You understand that, David? Yeah, keep it going. Okay, so if you, listening to this, are in peace, loving, and live in freedom energies, the programs you are carrying are perfect as they are keeping you, and remember, keeping you without conscious thought in the growth energies of expansion. This is the way we are to live. If, though, you are one of those listening that are in fear, worry, anxiety, if you are sad, depressed, and live feeling trapped in life, this means you feel within restricted energies, and this is the survival energies of beta. If this is your state you live in, if this is the frequency you live in, you have two choices. One, continue to live in fear and deal with all the issues fear will manifest in your life situation. In fear, Remember, it's simple. This is not complicated. In fear, you live in restriction. So if in career, if you're in this state in career, in restriction, you will despise work, and a third of your life will be spent in apathy energy. In finance, in restriction, you will have a worry relationship with money. And understand, the amount of money you have doesn't matter. I know people with a million dollars in the bank living in constant fear and worry about money. They continue to live in a broke mindset. In health, in restriction, you will live in disease. This is just science, people. In restriction, your nervous system is dominated by the time it spends in the red zone or the sympathetic nervous system, which means the body is cut off from repairing and cannot be well. In relationships, in restriction, you are stuck in the wants. You will seek the want of approval and create competition within yourself. You will seek the one to belong and belonging, and you will create separation from you and others. This leaves you with a persistent state of judgment. You will attempt the want of control to control, and you will live anxious and fearful. And that is the relationship that will keep you in constant, I don't know what the word I'm thinking of, David, constant um, angst, Constant, always trying to control everything, right? Yeah. And if you are living in the want of security 
and 95% of the people are stuck in that restriction of security, you will remain in a relationship that doesn't even serve you. Many people stay with people that doesn't serve them, but they feel secure with it. It's normal for them, yet they're unhappy. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? You're being alone. So this is in a relationship. Now, personal spiritual development, in restriction, you stop growing. You stay within whatever programming you have. You live in hope, praying something outside yourself will swoop into your life and save you from the pain, fear, and overwhelm you are living in. So that's the first choice you guys got. You can live that way. And listen, I am not one to judge if that's the way you want to be. That's the way you want to be. But I can't believe that's a listener of ours. I don't know why you would listen to this if you didn't want to change, correct? So the second choice is to step outside your programming and reset the programs to fit a life that you want and are naturally connected to. This is the unconditioning process that we'll talk about today. So, David, the unconditioning process begins with awareness of how you were given your current identity. So, if you look at that, number one, you have been taught some very important truths here in Stress Mastery. A truth is a truth for every single human being, or it's not a truth. It's not a belief. If I teach you and I say this is a truth, that means there isn't a single human being on earth that it doesn't affect. Correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. So here's some truths. First of all, the survival responses. The survival responses must be managed and controlled by you. The stress response must be managed through your diet and exercise. So you can have awareness, willpower, and the ability to step outside your current programming. This is living in the green zone. But remember, it's not your outside circumstances that can take control of this. Stress does not control you unless you're unconscious. You must control stress. And it starts by understanding the stress response. Next, the comfort zone cage must be honored and understood. You ain't getting rid of it, people. To uncondition our programming, we must step outside our tribe. As you have learned, this is unnatural. You are going against a very powerful DNA programming, that programming to keep us within our tribe. As you step out, you will feel a very strong magnetic pull to go back. You may start a new eating regimen and the pull will be cravings for the foods you are attempting to avoid. You may start taking classes and your family will guilt you so you will stop and get back and take care of them within the tribe. You may start a budget and out of nowhere, the washing machine will break down, causing you to panic and snap back into your lack and poor me program. The comfort zone cage has to be understood. You don't get rid of it. And the comfort zone cage is protected by the powerful fear energy. This energy is there to protect the identity you carry. And that's whole purpose is to protect the tribe. To conquer this, you need to honor it. So the first part of honoring your comfort zone is understanding the testing periods. So your testing periods are when you make a decision to step outside the cage and you're going to experience what is called the snapback. You have to get through the testing periods of 30 days, 12 weeks, six months, and then finally at one year, you will have accomplished the process of unconditioning the old programs and putting in new programs. You will, it takes that long. So it's one year after you started. It's not one year of perfection, people. It's not 30 days of perfection. It's 30 days of momentum of moving toward what you want. Do you understand that, David? Yeah. Uh, you told me last night, it's not 30 days of perfection. It's 30 days of perfecting. Like yes, going, going through, through slowly down, getting back up. You're going to, because the, that's the first thing. Test period. The other thing is, you're going to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. 
And you have to allow that to happen. You can't fight that discomfort you're going to feel because that uncomfortable feeling is the survival mechanism to snap you back. And then understand this, when you fall, get back up immediately. You might not even notice that you fell. And the moment you notice it, sit down and journal it, learn from it and get back up and keep going. You don't lose unless you quit. Yeah. You lose is to quit. And this is a simple one. It sounds like a cliche, but you need to stay strong. You just need to stay strong. You need to know this. This is why I'm educating you on this because if you think you're going to be perfect, you're screwed. You are not going to be perfect. It is not within our DNA to change who we are, to change our habits. It doesn't matter what you think is right or wrong or what you think is good or bad. It doesn't matter. The programming is driving your actions is unconscious, not consciously of what you think. The programming doesn't give a damn what you think. Does that make sense, Dave? Yeah, it doesn't discriminate. It just no, it doesn't does discriminate. what it does. <laughs> so number two, you need to empower life's connections. This is the connection of head, heart, and hand we've been talking about over the last months. Many of us know we are unhappy and want to change one or more of the life categories that we live with. We make attempts to grow a business or a career only to fail and go back to a job we hate or... We never even try. We talk about what we are going to do. We make attempts to change our eating patterns and we start ex- and start exercising only to be derailed by the first obstacle or we talk about what we are going to do. Mm-hmm. We make attempts to become positive and spiritual and we start a course or we start a meditation practice only to quit the first time that we are stressed out or we talk about what we are going to do. The reason this happens is, is, as we said, it's unnatural to change anything in your identity after age seven. And we consistently fail because we fail to connect. The condi- and it's the connection to the condition we lived in before the age of seven. This is life's connection that we spoke at on the event. This is the life's connection that we're talking about for the last year here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. It's the life's connection of head, heart, and hand. So before age seven, we all lived in this connection. As a child, we lived in the energy of growth and expansion. We learned language. We learned math. We learned spelling. We learned the rules of the tribe. We learned everything. We had no discrimination or fear. We lived in the now where we actually lost track of time when we were doing something. We lived in connection. After age seven, we then lived in disconnection. We lived in worry competition, separation, stress, and fear. After age seven, we lived in head-hand connection. Living in this connection cuts off the heart. So we live in the force energies of fear, of poor me or all me, of pride, and this becomes our identity. But remember, what are those energies? The survival energies. We had to live in those energies for the tribe to survive. The key to all of this, the key in unconditioning life's programming is to reconnect to life's connection. And that's the connection we had the first seven years of life. So let's talk about that. Any questions on that, Dave? No, I like it. I like that we keep on changing it up and making it a necessity versus just normal survival. Just because nowadays it's not a necessity anymore. At all. You know? Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say at all. Of course, you still got to know not to touch the hot stove and not to, you know. Yeah, but to run away from a tiger or something like that, you know. To drive on the left side of America, to drive. All those little (laughs) things are like, (laughs) just for you. So this starts with, number one, setting the drive of the head. Okay. To accomplish this, to set the drive of the head, to accomplish this, you must reprogram the head. So the head. The ego in your identity lives here in the head. Remember, this programming of your identity in the ego is homeostatic. Mm -hmm. This homeostasis, it's designed to remain. Again, it doesn't discriminate whether it's good or bad, it is. So, reprogramming the head starts with awareness. The awareness needed is, very important people, you are not the voice in your head telling you who you are, what you are good at, 
and what you can or can't do. The voice in your head is the programming, which makes your identity. The identity is the ego. This is step three of stress mastery. Name your ego. Next, it's about letting go of the programs that are causing these messages in your head that are telling you who you are and the programs you receive from the tribalization process. Now, to do this, it must be activated. Very important to understand. A program activated is an energy. This is the emotion and feeling you're having. This program's purpose, it has one distinct purpose, is to drive you to act, to take an action. Now, the programming, to release a program, the first thing you must do is cut off the energy of activation. That is mindfulness. That is awareness. We're talking about mindfulness um, um, tomorrow, we'll be talking about mindfulness. We're talking mindfulness meditation. But you're going to understand what mindfulness really is because what that is is the moment you notice the energy, you have cut off the stream. And then when you do this, this allows the program to burn out. Then you do the let go technique. That's the let go technique. When the program releases, that's the let go technique, step four of stress mastery. So when you think about when these programs are activated, you're always going to feel a restricted energy in your heart, right? The key of the let go technique is to allow it to be there. You can't fight it. So the moment you fight it, it's over. Do you understand, Dave? Yeah, I, I noticed that every single time. If I just try not to go into it, tends to fade away. The more I go into it, I create these stories and it starts from one little thing. Next thing I know, I have 20 different stories about something that could have been gone if I forgot and left it alone. So that's really good what you just said. What I creates the stories. It's the Either. I. What, do you know the answer? Identification. Yes. It's the eye of identification. That's the head. That's the ego. It's an identification. It's not you. And when the stories are created, those stories will always be linked and anchored to either the past or the future. They're never really what's happening in front of you. That's the survival of the programs, which is a survival of the identities, which is a survival of the ego, which if we take it all the way back was a survival of the tribe. Okay, so the next step after this, you've got awareness, you let it go. The next step is to reprogram the head with empowering programs that will develop new habits. Every, pro, every habit is a program, good and bad. Every habit's a program. And this is done with the green focus power hour. That's essential. You've got to work on yourself. The level of your personal development at any given moment will determine the level of your success. So if you're not working on yourself, there is no way you're ever going to change. You're wired to stay miserable. You're wired that way. So you have to take that. Nobody outside you can do it. It has to come from within. Now, as you do that, now it's time for you to become the programmer. The, to become the programmer, you have to answer some questions, right? First of all, what do you want? You need to get clarity, very clear on what you want your life to look like. And when you get that clarity, you really need to go in every aspect. And don't just look at you want more money. How does that affect career? How does it affect health? How does it affect, look at the five categories, relationship. You've got to look at life that way and really dial in. This is what I want. Then you have to learn how to set higher goals. And you set the goals, right? So you got that. And as you set the goals, you then develop a plan for the goals. And that is setting the drive of the head. That is set, clarity, plan, and goals. So after you set the head, you then go to number two, and it's about mastering focus by connecting to the heart. This is where you master focus. Now, let me get you to understand this. Focus is easy. Focus is dependent on who is controlling the conscious mind. When a program gets activated and energy is released, if the ego controls the conscious mind, you are unconscious and living in stories. If you have focus and you can stop the stream, allow the energy, and let it go, you then control the conscious mind and you are present and in the now. So to make this connection to the heart, you need to connect, very important people, to the person you were the first seven years of life. You need 
to do this by discovery. Mm -hmm. So nobody, you didn't come out of the womb and they told you this is who you are. You knew who you were. They told you your identity. They told you this is your name. You weren't born with that name, but every one of you were born with a purpose. And that's the first thing you have to find. Number one is purpose. Your purpose is you. It reveals you to you who you who you are and what are your natural tendencies. And most important about knowing your purpose is knowing the pendulum. Knowing for me, my purpose is vitality, energy, health. That's what I've done my whole life. I've been aligned to my purpose. I also know that my pendulum is stagnation. So when I get red zone because things aren't moving as fast as I want them or the way I want them, and I'm in this period of stagnation, I also know I need to let that go because that's a program pulling me out of the present. I'm in the future. Does that make sense, David? Mm -hmm. So did you just <laughs> me? It's so funny because we're having a conversation that you're into this because you're listening. I'm so into it. That's no, what I'm no, no, you gotta, you gotta participate. You know what? I you're think everybody starts to okay. notice. If I'm not talking, and I'm just like, yep. I, I know, man. I'm watching I'm you. You're it. like, people can't see you, but so that's number one is your purpose. Then you have to, number two is your values. You see, we were all born with purpose and values, and there are spiritual values that I do. I don't wanna reveal them because I don't wanna plant anything in your heads when you go through the exercises and learn this. You need to learn this. And so, Values, these are what you honored the first seven years before you were programmed with beliefs and identity of the tribe. Values, if you have a value, that means it's in the heart. You're going to honor that value. So what happens is if you want to get healthy and you don't have a value of health, you aren't going to get healthy no. <laughs> because your values will determine what you'll act on no matter what. Remember, when you're connected to the heart, it's very different than connecting to what you believe you want. No, no. It's the heart. The values are very, very important. And I know I don't have enough time, but I have to do a show on that because I want people to understand it. So maybe I'll even, do it, I'll even do it this week somehow. So after you discover your purpose and values, then you, ha you take your settings of the head. I mean, you're, this everything we talked about the head. And you release them into the heart. And how do you release them? You release them through imagination. That's the heart's superpower. So a child knows what they want, but they always imagine that they already have it. That's why they won't stop bothering you. They're not going to stop bothering you until they get it. It's natural. So when you have that connection to imagination, it builds these two tools that will change everything. Faith, which means you're going to move forward because you know you got it. You already got it. And gratitude. Monty Taylor at the Awaken event really went into gratitude. It showed the science behind gratitude. And it just blew people away. So when you're connected to the heart, you're connected to purpose and your values. And you then use your imagination in this, and, and that's your superpower, but the tools of faith and gratitude keep you going no matter what the outside world is telling you. And this brings us to the last part of connection. So we connected head and heart. This brings us to the connection of execution and it creates the process of unconditioning, and that is action. And this action is the connection to the hand. The hand is connected in either case. Understand this. So the hand connected to the post seven years after age seven, it's connected to the programming of the identity. And that means that the hand is connected to survival. And it's survival of the tribe. And it's connected to the survival energies. So what happens when you're connected to the head hand, if you go against your program identity of self-image, worth, or esteem, the hand will procrastinate. Mm -hmm. If you start acting outside your program identity of self-image, worth, and esteem, the hand will sabotage your efforts. When you create head, heart, hand connection, the hand acts, takes action with integrity. You do what you say you're going to do. You follow your plan. You execute. It takes action with service. In other words, it's always about servicing you, service you. This is honoring your, your picture, your imagination, your holding in the heart. Nothing, nothing is more important 
Mm -hmm. People say one of their top values is family. And I always call bullshit on that because if it's true, then you will make yourself the highest, best self you can make you for your family because everything has to do with energy. So if you're telling me family is your value, yet you're sick with disease, you procrastinate, you're not happy, then it's bullshit, people. Stop lying to yourself. It's about you taking care of you. And so when you create that head, heart, hand connection, the hand acts with integrity, service, and action moving toward whatever is programmed through the law of mind. What you imagine, you become. The hand acts. If you connect to the emotions, feelings, and step into the picture of the life that you have set in the heart, that you desire to live, you will attract everything you need to realize this picture. What you feel, you attract. The hand will act as you feel. Mm -hmm. With connection, you will speak, act, and think differently. And what you think, you create. The law of mind is an operation, whether you want to, uh, if you want to think it's poo-poo or you think it's not real, it doesn't matter what it thinks. It does, like David says, it doesn't discriminate. The law is the law. We are programmed to live in the past, to preserve the tribe and its beliefs. We are programmed to live in the future. Our habits dictate our actions and our future life. But with the understanding of this unconditioning process we talked about today, with a plan to undo the conditioning and the reprogramming of our lives, with, a, with surrounding yourself with the right people and creating a actual system of accountability, each of us, each of you are empowered to manifest your life and to pass this manifestation to a new tribe programming to future generations. Anything, David? I liked it. I, obviously, you can tell from the lack of words. Uh, I like it. Words. I, I just, I think it's one of those things that people always, it, when it comes to that, it's always poor me in most cases, you know, and it's not poor you. It's universe doing it to everyone. How are you going to receive what is happening? Exactly. And see that, oh man, it changes. I'm on a roll this week because I yes, guess I'm, you on, are, man. <laughs> I'm on a roll. I, 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 I sat down, I wrote that episode. It came out of me so fast and that. So that's it for today's show. Our mission here at the Stress Mastery Podcast is to create a shift in the planet. And you could join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired.